Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So, I am gonna be doing another kind of grocery shopping vlog, as I know you guys really love it, but today I'm gonna be doing kind of a little bit of a twist on it, because I'm gonna be doing a grocery haul and sharing with you the process of how I go shopping in a Russian grocery store. I'm gonna be giving you like a price breakdown, things you should bring, and everything you should know. So let's go home and unpack to see what I got for this week's grocery shop. So this is what I got. I always bring this massive backpack to the grocery store. It's actually the same size as like a carry-on suitcase, the one you bring on the plane, and it works really well. You can also put it horizontally when you're packing it in the shop which is super helpful. By the way, if you're interested in a breakdown of the price of every single item I bought today, I'm gonna put my whole receipt in the description in case you're interested in just the price of a few items. So, when I first go into Peregrostock, which is the shop I do my big weekly shop at, I always go into my pockets and grab, first of all, my mask, second of all, a coin, because in Peregrostock, to be able to get a trolley, you need a coin. Once I've got my trolley, I go into the first section of the shop, which actually is the fruit and vegetable aisle. Um, I'm gonna show you now what I got from the fruit and vegetable aisle. So I'm gonna be making a stir fry this week. One of the ingredients is zucchini. So I got a zucchini, which cost 29 rubles. I also got salad. It's very odd here because they sell all of their salad, well, basically all of their salad, the cheap salad anyway, in uh, like a plant pot with soil and the roots and everything. I also got some carrots, because as I always say, carrots is an essential for any Russian's kitchen. It's in most of the recipes, as well as onion as well. I got a few loose onions. Uh, the carrots cost me uh, 28 rubles and the onions cost me 18 rubles, so not much at all. Fruits and vegetables here are quite good quality actually and relatively cheap too. To add to my salads, I got uh, some loose tomatoes. These were discounted, I believe. Mushrooms are a big deal here, and I feel very strange buying them because my grandparents and relatives do. They just pick mushrooms from the forest for free, and they get, like, huge crates of it. These are really nice ones. In the UK, they're called oyster mushrooms, and they're so, so expensive in the UK. But here, they cost me, like, around 80 rubles, so that's, like, around 80p for these really gorgeous oyster mushrooms. Uh, I also got a cabbage as well. I'm very surprised I found such a small cabbage uh, because usually they sell them like this big. I'm not even joking. The only ones I could get my hands on for like the first few months of me living here were like this big. And I finally found like a size that I could actually use because my cabbage always goes off. I'm not Russian enough to be able to use those massive cabbages. I also don't cook for enough people. So this is the perfect size for me because I'm just using it for one recipe. I don't make my own sauerkraut, unfortunately. Uh, but I do buy sauerkraut basically every single week I buy the brand um, I'm not actually sure what the brand name is but it looks like this anyway by the way I put my sauerkraut in a plastic bag because I don't know why but none of these containers that they put the sauerkraut in uh, work properly so whenever you put sauerkraut in your bag especially your backpack that's gonna like twist and turn this the juice will be everywhere in your bag and it doesn't smell very nice so you definitely need to put this in a plastic bag. A thing that I always get that I love here and we don't have in the UK is dried bananas. And no, they're not the like little crisp um, dried bananas. They're like really, really squishy bananas. <laughs> I love them, they are so, so sweet. I think they're not suited to everyone. I think my boyfriend doesn't really like these, but they are amazing. They really hit the spot, especially as I teach all day. I just like eat one of these and then I'm good for a couple hours. So definitely recommend these. They're also not that expensive. They cost like 50 rubles, so like 50p, and there's like worth 10 bananas in here. So pretty good. After the fruits and vegetable aisle, I personally go to the kind of granola and muesli and cereal section it's not an aisle it's a section there's not much variety unfortunately like the uk in the uk we have like huge huge like aisles of uh, cereals and granolas but that's not the case here uh this week i got muesli with uh, like pineapple pear coconut uh, raisins got this one and I also got from the same company actually I usually don't get the same company um, stuff but I got a granola as well with hazelnuts 
uh, just to add a little protein first thing in the morning. Now moving on to the dairy section, which may be one of the biggest sections in the shop because in Russia they love their dairy. They have such a huge variety of their original dairy products like kefir. Just a quick point on why I don't have milk in this grocery shop. Uh, basically twice a week either Luke or I will go to the shop next door and we get milk, we get bread from like the little bakery. Uh, the bread costs maybe like 40 rubles and we also get just like a top up of yogurts if we've run out. Uh, but yeah, that's what we do twice a week. So we usually don't buy milk in this grocery shop like the big one of the week. So that's why you won't see it. But anyway, something that I always do buy is yogurts. Uh, so, my boyfriend really loves yogurts. <laughs> I used to have yogurts maybe like once a month. He has yogurts every single meal, basically, apart from breakfast. So, yeah, I do get a lot of yogurts. So, this is one of the brands that I bought. Um, not sure if it's gonna focus, but it's this one here. So, I got two of the strawberry ones. But the brand that we really love is this one, Episa. Um, I'm not sure if it's a Russian brand or not, but we really like it because it's super super thick and creamy So I got coconut pomegranate and raspberry Got mango and I think passion fruit or just mango um, And there's other ones as well just like the same ones or repeat um, And what other dairy products did I get? Oh, I got butter as well because uh, we're running out of butter. I like this brand. I think it's just full of really good wholesome uh, ingredients. That's what I really like from food. I don't like getting stuff that I don't know what's in it. You know what I mean? You'll probably notice that from the stuff I buy. The last dairy product that I got for this week was Cambibert. Um, definitely saying that wrong. I 100% know it. My boyfriend is French, so I always try to get something that... I don't know, like reminds him of home, so sometimes I get uh, like salami, uh, unfortunately it's not French salami, but it's like Spanish salami, but it's quite similar. Or I try to get some brie, or I try to get some cambiva, um, so yeah, that's what we do, and it's a nice kind of like snack around like 3 or 4 p.m., that's what we have on some bread. If you're dairy free and you're wondering, oh my goodness, how am I gonna have dairy free options here? That is a thing, they have Alpro here, they have other brands, other dairy free brands, uh, so as you can see in this clip, you can see the prices and that sort of thing, so if you're interested. Uh, after the dairy aisle, there's like a little place for eggs, and I just get eggs maybe every two weeks, and this is just a box of 10. I always get this brand because I think it's like the best quality. It says C0. Uh, the next part of the shop is the frozen section. I didn't actually buy anything frozen this week. I usually don't have anything in my freezer apart from ice cubes and maybe some palmeni. In, like just for an emergencies. I don't really like the frozen food. I think it's very bad quality to be honest. I've bought uh, just some ready kind of made foods before and yeah, I'm not, not a fan to be honest with you. The only thing I really buy from the frozen section maybe every month um, is shrimp, like the big like king shrimp. Is that what it's called? King shrimp? Just a big shrimp, you know what I mean? Um, and I'll buy that just to put with some uh, like risotto, some tomato risotto. That's a really nice meal. But other than that, don't really buy anything from this frozen section. After that, there's like the grains and the pastas. I didn't buy any of those this week. Um, but I did, something I did buy, which I usually don't buy, is as I said before, I'm making stir fry this week. So I got some rice noodles. These are really nice ones. They actually have a really good variety of ready-made uh, dishes here and they're not that bad if you're just one person. I would never buy ready-made meals for Luke and I because it's just too expensive for two people. It would be like maybe six pounds, seven pounds with two of us. I don't think that's worth it when I can just cook my own food. But it is an option if you are interested. They also have really nice salads. Sometimes I'll buy like a Russian salad, uh, just if I'm feeling a bit lazy, but I also want Russian salad. For example, like vinaigrette, or what's another one, like Olivier a salad. I feel like I'm saying that wrong, but you know, that salad with like loads of mayonnaise in. Oh, speaking of mayonnaise, there's a huge selection of mayonnaise here, which is so funny, but not surprising because mayonnaise is like in every salad here. So uh, mayonnaise here is very, very cheap. You get like massive like tubes of it. And for other options of sauces, they have like tomato ketchup. They also have um, authentic 
French mustard because Luke and I absolutely love Dijon mustard and they have the real deal here. Well, not here specifically, but as in just Perigord stock. It was actually one of the reasons we stopped shopping at Spa and started shopping at Perigord stock because they have like just some brands and some products that Spa just doesn't have. Uh, like for example, the authentic uh, French mustard. I just wanted like products like this and Spa didn't have it, but Perigord stock did, so. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the next section is meat, and they actually have like an in-store butcher section, just like we have in the UK and like Tesco's and stuff. Um, but I personally don't go to it. I would love to go to it, but just because there's a language barrier, it's the really only thing I've had a problem with, with like language barrier, is just going to the shop and requesting what I want from like the salad bar or the meat, uh, like the butcher bar. Um, <laughs> don't think that's the right word to use. But I know all of the words for numbers, to request stuff, uh, to say I want that one, that one, uh, the names of the meats, I know all of this. It's just communicating it and understanding what they're saying. I just buy um, the like packeted meat, which I know a lot of you said isn't as good, but it's just the option I have. <laughs> so yeah, I bought two packets of pork this week, one from Chef, one from, um, I've actually never got this brand before, it's called Promaguro, Promaguro. I also got some bacon, so I'm eating a lot of meat from pigs this week. <laughs> uh, but it's just for a specific recipe. I actually shared that recipe a few videos ago, so I'll put the card up here to go watch it. Uh, but yeah, I got some bacon for one of my recipes. Um, I also got, what other meat did I get? Oh yeah, I got chicken. I think that's all for meat, yes. And then after the meat, the next section is kind of like uh, tins and, you know, like preserved stuff. So I got, first of all, oil. I need some more sunflower oil. This really didn't cost that much. It cost me like 30 rubles or something. I also got some baked beans. Yes. Can you tell I'm British? <laughs> Sometimes we like having beans on toast now that we're not having eggs on toast every day. It's really weird because the tins here are actually really expensive. Like in the UK, you buy tins because you're like on a budget. Like you want to buy tinned beans or something. Here, tinned beans cost like two quid, like 200 rubles. I don't know why, but there we go. So that's why I always grab tin stuff when they're discounted because they're actually really expensive here. The next thing that I got is lemon and fish from like the fish section. They have like a separate like uh, dried fish uh, window and then they have like fresh fish and usually you're meant to ask for it right but I found the other week with the butcher section and with the fish section they have like a section where they've already pre-packaged the stuff from the windows so it's really great because you get that same price and that same quality but you don't have to talk to them <laughs> so that's what I do with the fish and the meat sometimes and it was actually really funny I wish I kind of filmed it not funny I feel bad for the lady but there was one fish like this the others were like super expensive super small like little fish um, and there was just one and it was this one and me and the lady were looking at it and I came in with my trolley and grabbed fish, put it and then just went off <laughs> and she was like looking at it, looking at it, looking at this fish and I was like, I feel really bad but I really want it too so <laughs> I took it and they always have like a basket of lemons next to it already with the stickers on so it saves you some time, I always just go there for lemons. Uh, so I'm going to have this with some lemons in the middle, uh, which is really nice. They like gut it already for you, which makes it super easy. And the last couple of sections is first of all bakery. But as I said before, we go to the bakery really near our apartment uh, twice a week for some bread. So I don't get the bread from the bakery section in the shop. But I do get this right here. So it's like a little um, pastry thing with cottage cheese in the middle. I really like these. They're my go-to uh, when I need to wake up early and I just wanna quickly eat something. I really like these. I also, for the first time, got some like biscuits from that aisle. I usually just get biscuits from like the biscuit aisle, but um, I got these. They look quite nice. Uh, they were, I don't actually know the price of them. Either 68 rubles or 88 rubles, but I thought they looked quite nice. The last section is the home goods section. So like tissues, washing up, liquid, all of that sort of stuff. And this week I got tissues. How exciting. Uh, so yeah, I've just got those, nothing to say about that. So yeah, that is everything I got. If you're wondering how much it cost me altogether, it cost me just under 30 pounds. So just under 
3,000 rubles. Um, by the way, the last step of the whole process of shopping is obviously checking out. What I do is I just get my trolley, put everything on, and the person who's checking out the food always asks, like, do you need a bag? I'll put the phrase in Russian here, so you know that phrase. Um, and then you just say niet or da, and then just put everything straight back into the trolley. It's kind of like Aldi, so you don't like kind of pack your bag unless you have like five things right at the checkout. You put everything back in your trolley and then they'll say, oh, do you have like a shop card, like a loyalty card? I'll put in that phrase again in Russian on the screen. And then you say da on yet. I actually do. I have my loyalty card for the two shops I go to, so the one next door and the Perigross Dock. Um, and that just gives me a great discount. I think this week I saved maybe like three pounds or four or five pounds this week. So like maybe 400 rubles on this shop because I bring my loyalty cards and then the points are worth the money which gives you a discount next shop which is amazing but after I put everything in the basket I then just go to one of the tables and pack everything in my bag really well um, as I said earlier my bag um, actually like lays down perfectly like this so I can open it fully up like this like how amazing is that at? and put everything laying down um, which is good. And then I just go on my merry way. By the way, um, they always do this, and I was so confused of what it was for the longest time. In Perigrostock, they give you these stickers, and they always ask you, or not always, they sometimes ask you, like, do you want the stickers? And I was like, no, thank you. But what these stickers actually are, they used to be Mickey Mouse stickers, but now they're just like the logo, which is a bit more boring. But then I was like, no, I don't want Mickey Mouse stickers before. That was That's what confused me. I was like, why is this lady wanting to give me Mickey Mouse stickers? Anyway, so here are the stickers they give you. Um, and then you're meant to get like this catalogue with like discounts in. And every discount is worth like three stickers or five stickers. So you're meant to collect the stickers, put them in the like little catalogue uh, with like vouchers. And then show them that you've collected the amount of stickers you need to be able to get the discount for things. So yeah, that was basically everything. I hope it wasn't too long and boring. Um, I know it probably wasn't everyone's taste. But I thought it would be interesting just to break down exactly what I do, what I buy, that sort of thing. As a British person living in Moscow because it's slightly a different experience than living in the UK obviously different products different layout and everything like that if you did enjoy this video make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already as I post a new video all about living in Moscow and like traveling in Russia every single Sunday uh, so make sure you stay up to date I also have a Patreon now, so if you do enjoy my content and would like to financially support me, do feel free to go over to my Patreon page um, to look at the benefits of becoming a Patreon. So see you next Sunday for another video. Bye!